Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 768 and the title today is Surf Love is Not Enough. Your relationship with yourself requires a lot more and I'm going to break that down more clearly and also explain why this sounds like it's counteracting what I said yesterday. So before I get into all that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, or I should say an author of a best-selling book either way, called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a powerful book for relationship um, improvement for singles and couples, men and women. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women, helping them find balance in love, life and business as a speaker and a coach. Um, although it comes up a relationship attraction expert, because coaching is such a weird term for me. But anyway, that's me. Being a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine is what informs my work, but also what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring the Feminine Heart, or Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. But nowadays I've abbreviated the title because my each week each day's titles are long enough now that it just there's not room for everything, so it's now MFTM for convenience. So today we're talking about how soft love is not enough. Now, first of all, before I say this, I did say yesterday, and the title of yesterday's talk was um, Soft Love is So Underrated, so I actually did explain why self-love is so important. And now it sounds like I'm saying it's not important. I don't mean that. What I'm actually saying is that self-love alone is not sufficient. So if you don't know about self-love conversation, please watch yesterday's broadcast. That was a lot more detailed about why it can change your life and every single relationship you're in and will have will, change, will be transformed by self-love. So definitely watch that broadcast. That was episode 767, because today we're at 768. And so I'm going to talk today about the other things besides self-love that you definitely would think of, you would, I would say this, you definitely should consider adding to your um, daily practice, self-support, and all the different things that make you who you are. So that makes you, first of all, much more effective in a relationship, but also makes you more attractive to a relationship too, if you're single. So this will help you if you're in a relationship or if you're single, because either way, this practice is about you. So let me break this down. Um, and I'm, I'm let you know also I'm, I'm cribbing or, or using a cheat sheet so to speak which is from my new course that I'm creating um, that I've almost finished creating which I'm launching and you can certainly sign up for that when I'll put the link in the comments for it called Coming Home to Yourself because all of this stuff is about how do you come back to yourself and learn how to be master of your own domain so to speak so take care of yourself so you can actually be more effective in life and more able to be in healthy relationships or said that part kind of sort of so I'm using, I've got a cheat sheet. I, I should say I've got my list off to the camera. So I'm, if I keep looking to the side, that's why. Because I want to cover a few things from that course that I'm creating. Again, I'll put a link in the comments so you can check that out as well. Although you cannot sign up for it directly, you have to reach out and talk to me first. And if you, I'll put a link in the page, you can check it out first, and then you'll know why. So self-love is a fundamental principle for, for healthy relationships because when you learn to love yourself, you're not so dependent upon somebody else loving you to make you feel better. I th again, talked about it in much greater detail yesterday, so watch yesterday's broadcast, because that really went into the, perhaps one of the biggest keys about how to get rid of, how to, get rid of, how to not fall into the trap of codependence. And the things I'm talking about today are adding to that list and also expanding your ability to take care of yourself. And it's one of the key things, by the way, is self-care, taking care of yourself. Because some, some people think they're doing a really good job of that. And they might be, but for most people, they're only taking care of certain things. Maybe it's their appearance to be in that perfect relationship. Maybe it's they're taking care of the bills. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they may not be taking care of their um, internal relationship. And what I mean literally, literally, figuratively, literally, let me see where it goes. Then I don't know if it's literal or figurative. That they're not necessarily looking at um, how they judge and talk to themselves. Your relationship with yourself, and I did touch on this a little bit yesterday, but I want to go into more detail today, is really vital in terms of how you treat yourself. And a lot of that treatment is what goes on in here. It's the self-talk, the self-reflection, the self-judgment, the self-assessment sometimes, and also things like self-recrimination and doubt and other things that we run on ourselves when we don't think we're doing the best we know how to do. Because, as I just said, you are doing the best you know how to do. <laughs> I did kind of leak that one out there. 
But what's happening though is you're missing out on the opportunity to be appreciative of what you do and who you are. And it's gonna sound simplistic to say this, but so many people miss the boat on this, is that if you were willing to do such simple things, something I do as a daily practice now, um, to write down things you're grateful for, even if you just did that alone, a simple gratitude practice where you wrote down, <clears throat> let's say three things every day that you're grateful for, things that you did that happened to you or things that you do for yourself or experiences you have, whatever that is, and do that every day for a year, it will change your life completely. And, my, and I've been doing that since January as part of my New Year's intentions, and I took for that one way back at the beginning of the year, and it's a game changer. Because I now have a, well, I can't reach it from the camera, so it's off camera right now, but this big jar of, of piece of paper, the colored paper, which I have things about I'm grateful for. When I look at that, it changes my mood. So having gratitude as a practice, whether it's a journal, or I use a gratitude jar because that's more visual for me, <coughs> excuse me, frog in my throat, then you'll change your relationship with yourself. That's a basic step. That's a, that's a simple step you can do right now. I mean, I'm giving you the practice right there. Write down three things a day at the end of the day that you're grateful for from, the, from that day. It's not hard to do. And in fact, you could be as simple as the fact that I got through the day without yelling at anybody. That could be a basic step to say. Or it could be saying I'm grateful because um, I would have worked out today. There are so many things you can be grateful for. Just do three to start with. You can do more if you want. But if you do that alone, it will change your life dramatically after every period of a year because what you start doing is changing your relationship with yourself and that's what this whole thing's about we don't always take sorry we often take for granted we don't take consciously awareness of our relationship with ourselves as i mentioned yesterday we're so externally sourced most of the time looking for love out there looking for relationship out there that we ignore the one inside and for a lot of what we need to do, I believe, for any area of relationship, is we've got to heal the one inside. Who we are and how we treat ourselves is fundamentally where the work begins. So a couple of things I want to mention from my Coming Home to Yourself course that I I'm talking about. Self-care is definitely part of that. Was hey, take care of yourself. And it goes, gratitude is a, is a cornerstone of that work because it changes how you treat yourself and it also starts to up-level your belief in yourself. Because when you believe in yourself, things change. And for some people, their belief is very tenuous. So gratitude is another way of getting there, as strange as it sounds. Another thing I'll talk about is, is having, um, as part of this treatment about self-care on this level, is self-acceptance and self-forgiveness. And these are two deeper things I talk about in my work, and it's in my course. Because, because how do I say this in a nice way? Most of us judge the hell out of ourselves. Most of us are not really caring about who we are. And in fact, most of us don't accept who we are because we always think we should be doing better. Well, I could be doing that, or I need to look differently, or I, I wish I lost extra weight, or the clothes I'm wearing don't fit me anymore, or I missed, or I missed an opportunity, so I judge myself. That, I'm not saying it's what we say out loud, but it's what we tend to say inside. So learning how to forgive yourself, first of all, with the judgments that you place against yourself, because nobody judges you like you do, it's true of all of us, by the way. I'm not saying that to you personally. I'm saying all of us are in the same boat. We all judge ourselves more than anybody else judges us. Secondly, when you do forgive yourself, you learn how to accept who you are as being okay. Yesterday, I also mentioned about the self-worth conversation, about the worthiness being a default that we forget that we already have. Self-acceptance brings us back to that place where we recognize that we're actually worthy. And as strange as it sounds, there's nothing to do to be worthy. Because the truth is, worth is who we, is, worthiness is what we're worried about before we even got here. Doesn't matter what your upbringing is, doesn't matter what your family dynamic is, doesn't matter what your career is, doesn't matter, much, doesn't matter how much money's in the bank, doesn't matter any of that stuff. You are worthy, period. That is who you are, is a worthy person. But we forget that. And a lot of times we forget it because we're so busy running a bunch of chatter inside that judgment, that self-recrimination, that self-judgment that denies us remembering our truth. So by working with tools like self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, and some of the self-care things I mentioned, you're starting to open up the space to allow the, the self-worth that you already have to become present again. 
and when you are learning how to be when you're learning how to remember your self-worth again your life transforms all these things i'm talking about including yesterday especially with the self-love piece these are life transforming experiences and the funny thing is you can do that yourself yes i've got a course i'm talking about called coming home to yourself yes i've got a book out that's also be in the comments and all the things i offer but really all of the stuff you can do yourself the reason why i work with clients which is my clients come to see me is because i help remember help remind them to remember remind them. yeah i help remind them to remember my work is a lot of times is not so much to change your life is to help you remember how to change your own life and so these things i'm talking about in this course are things i've learned over the years for my own life which i keep remembering because i forget occasionally too but also because a lot of times my clients keep going through this process so this is my distillation of much of the things i've learned over the years and practiced as well to be more effective in my life and effective in all my relationships another piece i like to the table is a piece that is that speaks to accountability and i mean this from the point of view is that we as human beings have responsibility i believe to live to our best ability not to be the best in the world but to live to our best ability well to be the best in the world at being you because that's the really only one you can do but to do that sometimes you've got to be accountable to that which means that when you forget to do something when you get lazy you don't judge you just become accountable meaning that rather than getting into that judgment trap which i mentioned earlier when judging is the police that limits you if you forget to do something or if you miss out on something if you do something wrong so to speak when you're accountable rather than judging yourself and blaming yourself and curling up in the corner and getting upset you go about correcting what happened so if you were late the next time you get there early if you missed an opportunity you make a call and you you, you apologize or you clean things up accountability yes there's things like accountability partners you can do that in, in a sense where you work in teams with people but i'm talking about being accountable to your own life meaning that you take conscious aware responsibility to be your best self keeping your agreements is another part of that that's a large part of the work into too is when you keep your agreements first of all you keep in agreements with yourself because every agreement you make out there includes you as well so it's not just the agreements you make with yourself alone but every agreement you make out there too is also part of this and keeping agreements as simple as it sounds is absolutely fundamental for you to start trusting yourself i've talked about this before i did a whole talk about self-trust so i'm just giving you a little cliff notes version here again it's another one of the components in the course self-trust is built on you learning how to keep your agreements because trust is based upon predictability when you can predict your keeper agreements you can trust that of course you can trust if you don't keep your agreements but that's not a very effective way of doing things so my my teaching here my reminder here is that when you start making sure your agreements you keep sorry agreements you make you keep and the subtler ones the ones you make internally when you wake up in the morning or, or when you go to bed at night and the next day i gotta wake up at seven o'clock in the morning go to the gym in the morning and then you hit the snooze alarm seven times that's not keeping agreements with yourself so make agreements you can keep first of all as in so don't make them hard for yourself but also make agreements that change your relationship with yourself maybe you set up an agreement where you're going to sit down and meditate every day because maybe you don't do that yet or maybe it's one round where you say i'm going to make sure i'm going to drink so you know so much water a day whatever that is for you and you start doing that set up agreements that you can do that you're in your control because sometimes those agreements that you set up sorry those agreements you set up with yourself are more effective because you're the only one who has to be responsible if you make an agreement that you're going to sit down and have a talk with your spouse about something if they're not available that agreement gets broken that's not your fault but it's just because you made an agreement with somebody else where they're agreeing to do it with you but let's start with yourself first agreements with other people can come later because you want to build a, a you want to build your muscle your practice your strength in the area of keeping agreements with yourself so that way when you make agreements with other people you do it from a place of intentional decision that you will keep that agreement because one problem people have maybe not you maybe somebody you know is you make agreements all over the place without any intention of keeping them or make agreements all over the place because you want to keep you want to be approved by people but then you don't know how to keep them so it's either you essentially don't or you, tend, or you just don't know how to but it's sometimes people make agreements because they feel like they say no they won't be approved of 
again, part of the coursework is to learn how to approve of yourself so you don't need other people's approval. This is, goes back to the self-love yesterday. When you learn how to be, or when you practice being more self-sufficient, self-supportive, you don't care about other people's approval. Not that you do things despite other people, but you don't do things from a place where your value is predicated upon them approving of you, because that's a trap. That is an absolute heinous way to live life. I've been there, it sucks. So just to be clear. So when, it, when I'm clear about in, in the work I'm doing with my clients and what I talk about in this course, is when you learn how to remember that you are worthy, deserving, and a trustable person because you trust yourself, what other people say about you has no impact whatsoever. So these are all just pieces of the puzzle. I'm not gonna give you the whole course because there's, um, I lost count now, 17, 18 different pieces of the puzzle. It was like three or four I gave you. That's a good start. So if nothing else, take these to heart. Apply these in your life and watch your life change. Definitely watch yesterday's broadcast as well because it's about self-love. It, it was a reminder how vital, powerful, and transformative that simple act can be. And the stuff I to give you today is just as easy, excuse me, just as simple, not always as easy to do, but it can change your life. If you want to find out more about what I'm offering, I'll leave the links in the comments for the Coming Home to Yourself course. You can check it out for yourself. It's a group program that's starting up shortly. I'm still gathering more people into the course so we can start. Um, and also, my book will be in the title too. And I think I'll put, I'll put a link in there as well for yesterday's broadcast so you can quickly access it because I recommend you watch it. It was a powerful talk. And I think that's about it. I haven't seen any questions, comments, so I guess I'm okay. Um, I'll respond after I sign off with anybody who has any questions or thoughts about this. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way, in case you hadn't seen me, my talk before. I do this every day on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And I didn't say yesterday, I'm saying again today. I'm finding that it's easy to find them on my YouTube channel because for some reason, my business page doesn't show back, go back that far and goes back about a year's worth of the broadcast, not all the way back. So if you want to watch my early broadcast, which I invite you to watch as well, um, also go check out my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like, please subscribe to my channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And when you scroll through all the page all the way down to the bottom of the list, you can then find search for keywords and find what you want to get to look at. And with 760 plus broadcasts, there's a lot of stuff out there to consider. So with that, I thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, please send me a message over social media or put them in below and I'll respond when I sign off. I will post the links again to my book, to come home to yourself and to the replay from yesterday. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, as I mentioned, at 5 p.m. So join me tomorrow at the same time, same channel. I thank you for being with me as always. And uh, my question to you today, your homework, shall we say, is how can you take better care of yourself? And if you want to write, send me a message, let me know what that's going to be. I'll invite you to send me a note about that. You don't have to, that's, on, that's up to you. But I thank you for watching. I thank you for being with me, with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, take care of yourself, literally. I'll see you again soon. Bye.